Hi to all the students. Audible, right? How are you all doing? It's nine o'clock. This is the time where we are always going to have a chemistry class, correct? Uh, how's the physics class going on as well? Because physics classes on this particular channel, the channel which teaches you each and every subject. I mean, you know, the physics and the chemistry in English. Uh, you know, brings up classes regularly from you know from past few days. And you know, the timing for the physics class is six p.m. The timing for the chemistry classes is nine p.m. So you should definitely let others know this time these timings as well right hi to everybody khushi abhirami vidya and yes other students come on be there in the chat watch this session till the end i'm you know you know what i'm only teaching you these particular chapters so that you can actually do better in your je and neat attempts correct so do not you know watch a session and then be like oh, it's not my thing and then you know just leave it you have to watch the sessions till the end right for those who are watching me for the first time my name is love mehan i am a graduate of iisc bangalore taught and mentored more than 50000 plus students online i have been a researcher before being a teacher and my own all india rank had been 361 in gate 2017 if you haven't followed me yet follow me on an academy for that you have to download the app and look for my name which is l u v M E H A N Love Mehen is my name, and you can search it over there either through this username or my name. You will get my profile, where you will be able to see a lot of special classes. Tomorrow, I am bringing up a special class for class 11th and class 12th and dropper students. What are we really going to do in that? We are going to be covering up organic chemistry because you know what? In in uh, YouTube, as we you are looking at. me doing solution solid state periodic table chemical bonding we are not talking about organic chemistry for now correct but do not worry we will be doing up organic chemistry in one shots uh, all the chapters i'll take one or two shots for uh, organic chemistry chapters and simultaneously we will we'll, we will be doing up the special classes so this special class is going to happen at 7 uh, o'clock in the evening tomorrow so do make sure that you attend that session and now over here guys pay attention there's one more telegram channel that you actually have to follow love mehan jee chemistry where you are getting all the study material everything that you require do join this telegram channel apart from this there's one more telegram cha tele telegram channel of this particular youtube channel so many channel channels so ultimately but yeah the more the channels are there the more you know uh, you know content you get i mean you never miss a miss out content and over here the telegram channels link is having the words j w -E, english an academy do join this telegram channel as well yavar sir's study notes materials everything is given over there as well okay and 2021 students there is a crash course uh, from my end which you should be looking at if you are actually preparing for advanced 2021 and for those who are actually 2022 students or droppers solid state solutions chemical kinetics metallurgy coordination compounds surface chemistry you know the whole physical chemistry has been completed for class 12th and we are also going to complete the inorganic chemistry by this month so do remember that okay yes and there are two more batches which i have started very recently on 18th august and 11th august spark batch for 2023 students shine batch for 2022 students over here all the educators are teaching and taking up classes in english so do remember that and over here if you are if a dropper and if you are looking for scholarships so do remember there is a separate scholarship test for you guys which is u set and over here you should remember that the first 1000 ranks students the first 1000 rankers are going to get 100% scholarship we're not talking about this rank 1 2 or 3 thousand students are going to get this so do remember that and over here it is going to help you to quick start your 2022 preparation we will talk about your areas of improvement and it is going to be a structured academic plan where it will end before your examinations and everything is going to be covered so to unlock this one do not forget to use the code which is my code the super code l u v g u r u this is the code that you guys have to use or you can actually scan this particular qr code but you should download the app as well and apart from this 2022 students do remember that there are amazing batches for droppers and freshers see 
how many 2022 batches are there the last one over here is the shine batch where the mode of teaching is in english so do remember that and these batches are starting up every month every uh, week for 2022 and 23 students and for the school students who are really looking for scholarship again do remember the unacademy combat happens at sunday 11 am it's absolutely free and over here if you have to unlock this love guru is the code that you guys have to use you get 100 percent 75 50 and 25 percent scholarship as well what's the code let us know in the chat so jacket new look oh anyhow today i'm feeling very cold i mean you know from past few anyhow days it's raining regularly and which is a good thing i like it uh, but it's the weather is cool these lights make the room slightly hotter i've switched on the ac it makes it cooler i have tried and tested some permutation combinations to you know adjust it uh, it doesn't really happens it's better to wear a jacket at night and now over here guys do remember whenever we're talking about uh, iconic and plus you get the india's best educators on an academy apart from this you can actually watch all of their classes live so what's the benefit of live over recorded the in instantaneous doubt solving so over here you get live classes then you get structured courses where you know that when these courses are going to end and pdfs and short notes are going to be given to you by the teachers over here live test and quizzes are available in the platform in iconic extra features which are not available in plus the personal coach study planner study material expert guidelines and a lot of things test analysis is also missing in plus but yes even plus is super duper awesome in order if you are a disciplined student and if you know how to do it we are going to be helping you out and over here for 2023 students i recommend 24 months of subscription which is just 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 50,400. We're not talking about just two months, guys. We're not talking about six months. We're talking about 24 months. Just divide this number by 24 and you'll get the per month cost. And this is the you know price after the code, after you apply my code, which is again the love guru. L-U-V-G-U-R-U. -U. It's a one word. Okay, so do not put any space. For 2022 students, 12 months, 34,650. This is going to be the co, you know, the price after discount. So do remember that. But actual cost over here is, uh, you know, somewhere around, uh, you know, 38, 30, uh, 36, 37, 38, something like that. So do remember that. Now, over here, we are going to dive into today's lecture. Are you ready? In today's class, we are going to cover up all the four colligative properties. This particular class is going to have the most highest weightage if we talk about solution as a chapter solution and colligative properties because we are going to talk about relative lowering lowering of vapor pressure elevation of boiling point depression of freezing point and we're talking about osmotic pressure as well reverse osmosis as well and these four topics are the most frequently asked in je when it comes to solution as a chapter henry's law is also asked but not that much if I would be even if I would be a particular you know uh, person who is actually setting up a question from solution as a chapter then obviously I'll bring up the question from these particular you know uh, topics only do remember be ready with a pen and a notebook because ultimately there are going to be good amount of uh, formulas that you should note because from this particular chapter direct formula uh, based question comes so apply the formula from the question you know you'll get the information apply it you get the answer that's it it's as simple as that and when we talk about 2021 questions it was it was even much easier okay uh, so do remember that super duper ready amazing i'm so glad to see this chat going actually colorful amazing Chalo. so now guys the first and the foremost one that we are talking about is relative lowering of vapor pressure in short we're talking about r l v p relative lowering of vapor pressure we'll talk about it to understand good amount you know to have a good understanding for relative lowering of vapor pressure do you remember the Rolle's law guys whenever we talk about let's say this is the vapor pressure of pure solvent you remember that Whenever it's a not, it's a it's for the pure solvent. And whenever we talk about the PA, 
where it's not a pure solvent so when a solvent cannot be pure ultimately when something is mixed ultimately when there is a solute right so over here whenever there is going to be a solute and we're talking about now what is the vapor pressure then what you really have to remember the mole fraction of a where a is solvent a is solvent a is solvent and the p a not this is what we remember from the previous class yes or no everybody let me know in the chat and now what are we really talking about over here whenever we are talking about relative lowering of vapor pressure it is this this is where we are going to start from so this is a small recap from the previous class and now pay attention we are going to talk about the elevation of boiling point where we actually in short words we can denote it as delta t b and when we talk about depression in freezing point we'll talk about delta t f and when we talk about the osmotic pressure it has to be a pressure right so it's a, there's a symbol pi guys pi yes that's the symbol not the value okay so we're going to use the pi as a de, you know a denotion for osmotic pressure we'll talk about it and yes do mark the attendance boys and girls hit the like button and share it with your friends so that they should also come over here and enjoy as you guys enjoy learning in english and now over here boys and girls pay attention we're talking about what exactly happens and what is the first and the foremost thing that you should remember which is happening with the solvent so let's say we are having water is water volatile water does water has a vapor pressure at 100 degree celsius yes so we're talking about 100 degree celsius what exactly happens to water at 100 degree celsius this boils water boils you know what is boiling i'll tell you the most simplest and the easiest definition of boiling boiling point so boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressures the vapor pressure pressure excited by the vapors okay is equal vapor pressure is equals to the atmospheric pressure theek hai so exactly at 100 degree celsius what exactly happens there are so many of vapors so many vapors of water which actually you know uh, is counteracting this is the atmospheric pressure 1 atm this is the vapor pressure of uh, water and at 100 degree celsius as both of them become same then ultimately we talk about that the water is getting boiled so do remember this okay easiest can you write the smallest simplest definition of boiling point again in the chat i want everybody to write this theek okay? hai i'm not going fast over here because if you are good with the concept of boiling point you will never go wrong when let it be the relative lowering of vapor pressure let it be the elevation in boiling point as well and now let's talk about more so whatever pressure that you guys are able to see due to the formation of vapors more formation of vapors more vapor pressure do remember that so p not not stands for purity this is a pure solvent this is a pure solvent so you can write p not a where i'm saying a is going to be solvent and b is going to be solute okay do remember this and now over here is this having a not over here no we're not talking about pure solvent over here there would be something what is it going to be the solute the b particles and now you guys have to let, let me know if these b particles are non volatile but it makes a solution what's going to happen even on the surface even on the surface these particles are going to be present they will be replacing the particles of the pure solvent obviously then ultimately from where which all places we can expect the vapors to form wherever these solute particles are not available the surface which is occupied by the solvent particles from there itself the you know solvent molecules will vaporize and when we talk about the places where we have solute no vapors will form from here because these 
atoms, particles, molecules, these are not ready to get vaporized. Correct? And now what's going to happen? Ultimately, the pressure that we are going to see is going to be less. Because ultimately, I'm going to say this again. What did I tell you? Vapor pressure is directly proportional to amount of molecules slash particles okay ultimately we should talk about particles of volatile substance in gaseous form do remember this I mean, I'm just talking about the most simplest definitions for you guys because there's no really, uh, you know, uh, point of remembering any bookish definitions. Ah, obviously, for boards you have to, but the easiest way to understand, no gibberish. Is this clear? The more vapors will form, higher is going to be the vapor pressure. Okay, so do remember this. Ultimately, what is the scenario? The P of solution where we have actually added the non-volatile solute, non-volatile solute is going to be lesser than the P of solvent, pure solvent, okay? So do remember this. This is what it is written over there. And now we can conclude that anyhow, whenever we are going to put non-volatile solute, the vapor pressure will decrease. Everybody write this. Whenever we add a non-volatile solute, vapor pressure decreases, okay? We'll talk about now the relative lowering of vapor pressure. Now let's move ahead. So this is according to the Rolls law. PA is equals to mole fraction of uh, A into the vapor pressure of pure solvent. Correct? We'll use this now. So we'll write it over there. Again, now, now we are actually getting into derivation. Pay attention. So guys, I'll take you to through an example. Let's say water had a pa naught value which is at 100 degree celsius how much is it going to be 1 atm correct i'm going to talk about in mmhg we're talking about water it is going to be 760 mmhg after putting up some amount of non volatile solute example glucose NaCl, the PA becomes, let's say, 600 mmHg. Do you see a decrement? Did it decrease? Yes. So now, if I have to write the change in pressure, the change in pressure, how much is this? What will I write? It's going to be Final minus initial, this is how we can write, correct? But what is a bigger term over here? Obviously, we know always it is going to happen. This is going to happen always that PA naught value is going to be higher than the PA value. Okay? So this time, what you really have to do is put PA naught minus PA. Easy, right? How much is the difference? You will be able to tell me. 160. How did you do that? Say 760 minus 600, correct? Chalo. And now, pay attention. According to Rolle's law, this can be written as this one. Mole fraction of A, P naught, correct? Now, yes, Khushi, absolutely correct. Whenever we add a non-volatile solute, the vapor pressure decreases. Now, pay attention. Do you see P A naught common? Yes, we do see that, right? P A naught is taken common. 1 minus X A. 1 minus mole fraction of A. <laughs> sorry. See, that's the, way I, that's the reason I'm wearing jacket. I'm so sorry. Okay. Now, 1 minus mole fraction of A is equals to mole fraction of B. Do you know this? First class of this particular chapter. I mean, yes, the previous class was the first class. I'm so sorry, but yeah, you know, remember that. Now what is going to happen over here? I'm going to write PA naught into XB. 
I'll also tell you what does this signify. Okay. So now over here, the change in the vapor pressure is only and only because of how much is the mole fraction of the non-volatile solute. Higher the no, you know, higher the quantity of the non-volatile solute, this value will also increase. If this value increase, that means the difference between the vapor pressure of water, pure, and the vapor pressure of the solution, the gap increases. And now, it's all because of how much quantity of non-volatile solute is what you guys are adding. Thank you. Now, pay attention. We are not still, you know, at the end of this particular derivation. Now, simply do one thing. Bring PA naught on the LHS. What is it going to be? Delta P upon PA naught. Okay. Is equals to mole fraction of B. Now, what is this? This is like how much is the change upon what was the actual value? How much was the change? 160 upon the actual value. What are we really doing over here? We are looking for relative. We are looking, we are not just looking for how much did it change. When we are talking about this whole term, we are talking about how much did it change and what was the actual value. That means we are talking about the relative decrement in low vapor pressure. Okay? So this is where This particular term is known as relative lowering of vapor pressure, which is nothing but totally dependent upon the mole fraction of non volatile solute. I'm going to write this for you guys, okay? Where A is solvent, volatile solvent, and B is non volatile, volatile solute do remember this hi stella welcome to the session so who who is uh, active right now writing this one up let me know in the chat is khushi writing all of this stella abhirami abhi everybody let me know in the chat okay now what can we write for this we'll do it here okay we'll do it here Mole fraction of B can be written as number of moles of B upon number of moles of A plus number of moles of B. But in, you know, in a lot of cases, whatever you guys are going to get, it is going to be like number of moles of B. The amount of solute that you will add is going to be way much smaller than the number of moles of A. So what's going to happen? Number of moles of B upon number of moles of A, which can be written as given weight of B upon molar mass of B upon given weight of A upon molar mass of A. Do write this down in place of mole fraction here which can be written as given weight of B upon mole fraction of B upon given weight of A upon mole wait molar mass why am i saying mole fraction molar mass of b yes molar mass of a do remember this okay yes or no amazing because ultimately this formula is the mo is the you know one which you really have to remember to be very honest if i would be a student at your place i will never remember that what is the formula of mole fraction because it is damn easy okay, so do not take it as a new form you know new formula if you remember that delta p upon p up not a uh, is equals to mole fraction of b you do not have to think that you know you learn, you, you have to cramp too many formulas do remember this but yeah what they can clearly do is they'll give you this value whole relative lowering of vapor pressure they'll give you this they'll give you this they'll give you this they'll ask for this they can ask anything. 
but other, other than that they will they will be giving you each and every information okay so direct formula you have to apply and you have to get the answer and now let's talk about yes over here so what are we really looking at give me a second yes i took extra space for derivation but i have actually completed this in one particular page so you'll be getting this as a pdf don't worry this is the same thing that we're talking about what is this boys and girls delta p this is delta p and what are you really really looking at moles of b upon moles of a that's what we are looking at and when they ask you to calculate the mo molar mass of b what are you really going to do take everything on the lhs do you really have to remember this formula even for one particular second if i would be you never i'm never going to do that i will never do that because this part is sufficient for me i can derive it by taking up 5 se seconds in the question paper while doing up a question paper okay so do remember that i'm not saying as a teacher i will be doing this as a student so do remember that okay now moving on ahead over here we have a question calculate the molal molal means one molal okay lowering of vapor pressure not relative just the lowering lowering means decrement change in vapor pressure talking that's that's the only reason i'm bringing up this question so that you should know that this particular question is having a different language for h2o at 100 degree celsius water at 100 degree celsius is having 760 mm hg or 1 atm which is the vapor pressure it's a boiling stage correct now pay attention how much is the solute one mole of solute in 1000 gram of solvent remember the formula of molality number of moles per kg of solvent right so that's why i'm written i'm writing 1000 grams and over here i'm writing one mole this one mole belongs to solute so we have the number of moles of solute nb is equals to 1 okay what about solvent na comes out to be 1000 and what is the molar mass of h2o 18 18 grams per mole what is going to be the value over here Fifty five point five five, and fifty five point five five is a very easy value to remember, because in almost every question you will see aqueous solution, and if they give you hundred or thousand grams of water divided by eighteen, you'll get five point five five or fifty five point five five. That is how you have to remember this value. Okay, so do remember that. Now, what are we really talking about? We're looking for lowering of vapor pressure. What's the formula? Let's talk about relative lowering of vapor pressure. If you have remembered that formula, okay. So let's remember that. You will write delta P is equals to P not A mole fraction of B. Correct. But you over here really have to just find the delta P value. So how is it going to be? Delta P is equals to mole fraction of B. So write mole fraction of B can be written as number of moles of B upon one. Plus fifty five point five five, okay? Into P not A. How much is P not A? Seven sixty mm Hg. So over here, this is what you really have to calculate, and you have to give me an answer. Fifty six point five five into seven sixty. You do have to let me know how much did the vapor pressure changed. i'll make it make this question a bit lengthier for you guys you guys actually have to let me know the value of pa let's see 13.45 chalo so if you guys give me 34 13.43 or 13.45 that is a correct answer now what will you talk about pa 
how much is this going to be simple you have the initial value you know the difference right so if you know delta p is equals to p not a minus p a you know this 760 you know the difference you just have to calculate the p a come on khushi do this come on come on come on everybody let me know easy hai yaar you just simply have to remove you know remove this much how much 760 minus 13.45 is going to give you pa that's how it is going to be it's not just khushi abhi you even you have to do it 6 746.6 746.6 is the approximate correct answer yes absolutely correct okay so do remember this i mean instead of asking this now the question can ask you this that's it you should know sir ek pose do na ek pose yaar tone wo nikli hui hai later <laughs> now we're talking about elevation of boiling point we'll talk about why is this happening guys pay attention whenever we talk about the boiling point what do we write boiling point is the point is the temperature value at which we say the vapor pressure is equals to the atmospheric pressure this is this this is the smallest definition okay we look for when vapor pressure is going to be equal to the atmospheric pressure now let me know when at 100 degree celsius for pure water at 100 degree celsius for pure water when the pressure value is 760 mm hg for the vapor pressure correct now if i add something you let's say write it is going to be 740 all because of the addition of non volatile solute at again 100 degree celsius so if we add any non volatile solute and the vapor pressure of the water has decreased the vapor pressure of solute so a sol solution has decreased now do you can you say at 100 degree celsius the solution is boiling yes or no let's see let me know boys and girls Abhi even you can take this particular as a, you know particular uh, pose as a pose whatever come on boys and girls let me know everybody what are we really talking about at 740 mmhg do you think that the water is boiling the solution is boiling the correct answer to this question is no the correct answer to this question is no at this particular temperature uh, this particular pr vapor pressure the water is not boiling again we have to do something to increase the vapor pressure and what increases the vapor pressure the second thing the first is the amount of gaseous molecules should be there now how did we make vapor pressure as 760 mmhg by heating by heating correct now if i have to make it 760 again because atmospheric pressure is constant at that point of time if i have to make 740 go 760 what will i do i do have to increase the temperature correct so hence it could be a possibility that now to make 760 740 to 760 instead of giving 100 degree celsius i am giving 102 degree celsius or 104 105 whatever that is going to be experimentally what are we really going to do we are going to increase the temperature so ultimately because of the addition of non volatile solute what changed boiling point changed this is known as the elevation of boiling point and why did it happen 
because a non volatile solute again going back to the same th scenario lowers the vapor pressure lowers the vapor pressure so do remember this is this really clear to each and everybody come on let me know now we will get into that okay and now what is exactly happening over here if you would look into the graph i'll explain the graph to you this is from the ncrt as well so now guys pay attention this is the 1 atm pressure atmospheric pressure and on the y axis you are looking at vapor pressure so whenever you increase see this is the sol uh, solvent pure solvent whenever you increase temperature did you did i increase temperature from here to here what exactly happened did the vapor pressure increase yes so similarly i am increasing the temperature so high that the solvent's vapor pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure and at this point at this temperature i will say this is the boiling temperature this is the boiling point so that is going to be delta tb b stands for boiling t stands for temperature this is this not this not is for this not represents what is you guys have to let me know in the chat i am not going to tell you otherwise you will say sir repeats the same thing again and again and now what exactly happens at any point of temperature when we add a non volatile solute this happens at the same temperature if the solvent this is same temperature right solvent had some vapor pressure solution had another vapor pressure now when you talk about the same temperature the boiling point solvent can boil but solution can this boil no it has to reach that particular vapor pressure and then what's going to happen now if i want this solution to boil its vapor pressure should be equal to the atmospheric pressure correct this is where i increase the temperature to an extent where the vapor pressure of the solution becomes equals to the atmospheric pressure and then ultimately the solution starts boiling but what exactly happened again same thing there is a new boiling temperature there is a new boiling point and that is denoted as give me a second that is denoted as not the delta remove the delta okay delta tb not okay so that over here it is going to become tb which is going to be a higher value always remember that which is going to be a higher value tb or tb not 100 degree celsius or 102 degree celsius obviously the newer one is going to be always higher so do remember when non volatile solute somebody said nv sir no no i'm not talking about nv sir okay whenever we talking about non volatile solute is added added then just remember tb not is smaller than the tb always and whenever we are trying to find the delta tb the change in the boiling temperature it is always going to be tb minus tb not clear so if 100 degree celsius becomes 102 delta tb would be 2 degree celsius if the boiling point was 373 kelvin and it became 375 then again the delta tb is going to be 2 kelvin so do remember whenever we actually look for the change in temperature we can use either degree celsius or kelvin any one of them they will never create a problem to you guys okay is yes, thank you so much abhi hi to nani rakesh welcome to the session riya is also very late today so guys do remember this and now what should we know the formula the final formula delta tb not a uh, tb is equals to kb this is a constant into molality this is the smallest formula that you have to remember now i'll write one more thing 
you guys have to let me know whether I'm writing up a new formula or an O, you know, the same formula. So I'll write it. Take okay? Delta TB is equals to KB into Is this the new formula or is this the same formula? Oh, is it? Rhea was there since starting. I didn't see the message. Guys, let me know. Is this a new formula or is this an old formula? Let me know. Come on, everybody. It's the same formula. Why is that? Because this, my dear student, is the formula for molality. So again, if I would be you, I'll just remember this. And if they ask you to calculate the molar mass of the solute, is this tough? Not at all. This is not going to be tough. So how is it going to be? Just take everything on the LHS. M2 is going to be equals to delta TB upon KB W1 and then we are going to have divided by W2 and then M, M no we do not have to take M into 1000. That's how it is going to be. So do you have to remember, do you think that you have to remember the third formula for this, you know, to calculate the molar mass? No. If I would be you, I won't do that. Okay. It's just one simple formula and you should remember the molalities formula. Okay. And why you should, why every 12th class student should be perfect with the formulas of molality and molarity? Because this is not a concept of class 12th. Molarity, molality formulas are taught to a class 11 student and you, if you are really preparing for competitive examination, you cannot put an excuse. Okay. So how many of you are not at all going to put any excuse over here? Do remember that and give me, let me know in the chat. And now, so this is the one that we're talking about. This is what I'm talking about boys and girls. This part is the molality. This is what I'm writing over here. M. Okay. If you want to remember maximum number of formulas, be my guest, but no, you do not have to. The only smallest one that I have told you is what you have to remember. But now in order to find the KB value, the constant, this is a constant. This constant is also known as the ibliopic constant, ibliopic. Okay. And what's the formula for this one? Pay attention. R universal gas constant M1 molar mass of solvent 1 stands for solvent 2 stands for solute A stands for solvent B stands for solute the temperature boiling point but in Kelvin not in degree Celsius divided by 1000 and how much energy do we have to provide to one mole of solvent to vaporize it? So that's what it is. Delta H change in enthalpy of vaporization. So this is a, this uh, this has a unit kilojoules per mole, right? And then you have R, which is a constant M one, which is going to be a constant T B, which is going to be a constant upon thousand. So ultimately. If this value particularly increases, KB value decreases. So do remember this. We'll talk about more things. Okay. Now, I am not at all going to tell you about the last formula. Not my thing. You remember this much. KB into molality. 
that's it now we'll do a question the question talks about the ebullioscopic constant which is kb anyhow for benzene is given to you okay amazing so we'll write kb here as well a solution of an organic substance in benzene boils at 0. 0.125 degree celsius higher than benzene so benzene is taken as pure solvent this would be having a boiling point which is going to be tb naught right it would be having this boiling point but when the substance is added in benzene this organic substance this is going to be solute what is this is this tb or is this delta tb they say let's say x is the boiling point of benzene when we add the solute the boiling point becomes higher than x this much 0 0.125 higher than x not the exact value it's just higher than that like you know uh, one student is two inches taller than the another student so that two inches is the difference not the actual height of the other student okay no student is of two inches so that's what we're talking about okay so this is going to be the delta tb value this is how you have to read the question and now calculate the molality of the solution is what you have to remember what are we talking about molality this is what we have to calculate easy tough medium let me know it's damn easy delta ta value delta tb value is given to you write the formula first write the values 1 to 0 0.125 is equals to kb value which is 2.52 into molarity let me know the answer come on 0 0.05 moles per kilogram absolutely correct 0 0.05 molal or moles per kilogram that is going to be the correct answer amazing abhi and khushi and now let's talk about the depression in freezing point so what are we really talking about so you should remember whenever we talk about depression in freezing point what's really going to happen let's say water not let's say it's a fact anyhow water freezes at zero degree celsius whenever we provide non-volatile solute the water does not freeze the solution does not freeze at zero point uh, zero degree celsius it freezes at somewhere around zero point five degree celsius i'm just giving you an example this exactly happens that means if you are actually going to put i'll give you an example in uh, you know countries where there is too much of snowfall there is too much of snowfall because the temperature is less than 0 0.5 degree celsius so if there is too much of snowfall on the road or maybe let's say this much is the snowfall on a car looks like cyber truck right you know we can make anything it is going to be real in anyhow upcoming future so on a cyber truck we are actually having a lot of amount of snow and it's a very tough task to remove such amount of snow every time okay now the snow is actually anyhow water correct which got precipitated in the form of snow and got settled on the car but now guys let me know what if i actually put a lot of salt is salt a non-volatile solute yes what is and we i'm not going to put very small amount i'm going to put very good amount of salt what's going to happen so ultimately the snow melts the snow melts why is that because let's say right now the temperature at which the snowfall was happening or where you know this car is covered is minus 0.5 degree celsius 
at this temperature even water in our refrigerators or even at our homes is going to be frozen correct snow ice whatever what if i actually put a non volatile solute so much that the melting that the freezing point of the snow actually becomes minus 1.5 degree celsius that means if minus 1.5 degree celsius temperature is achieved then only this these water molecules will freeze if it is minus 0.5 degree celsius it is not going to freeze so ultimately what will happen things will melt i mean not things cyber truck is not going to melt theek and either you snow is going to melt clear <laughs> correct actually correct chat pe dent pad jayega chalo so this is what is happening in this case and now what exactly happens over here guys pay attention something that we had been looking at in the previous class as well rolls law when we talk, you know talked about and even today's class when we are talking about relative lowering of vapor pressure whenever we add non volatile solute this is the see at any point of temperature this is the temperature of water theek hai this is 0 degree celsius where water has this much vapor pressure how much this much this much but at the same temperature if i add solute non volatile solute its actual vapor pressure of the solvent uh, so solution is going to be lesser but again to freeze a particular substance the vapor pressure the line should merge with the frozen solid so the, it, this is known as solidus okay it should inter, it should touch this point this line at higher at the same temperature pure solvent touched it i'll show you again this this liquid solvent vapor pressure and for the solvent uh, frozen solvent this meets and here it freezes but does these points meet does this line meets this point at the same temperature no then what's going to happen ultimately we have to do trial and error we have to slightly decrease decrease more and more of uh, the temperature and ultimately at a point where solutions vapor pressure on the y axis its vapor pressure meets the frozen solvent line over there it actually freezes so do remember this theek hai and ultimately this is going to become a new freezing point a new freezing point okay so now guys pay attention earlier point is always higher the initial one is always higher so i'm going to write this for you guys whenever non volatile solute is added so do remember to the solvent delta uh, this uh, tf not which is the initial freezing point which uh, this is always greater than the newer one this is a new one this is not same when we talk about the boiling point whenever non volatile solute is added to the solvent the newer boiling point is greater than the initial one do remember that i'll tell you again okay i'll make a line for you so guys pay attention let's say this is 0 degree celsius and this is 100 degree celsius i'm talking about water there would be a lot of different temperatures 10 20 30 40 and so on over here this is the freezing point i'm writing fp and this is the boiling point correct but this is for the pure water as soon as we add non volatile solute this becomes the new boiling point and this becomes the new freezing point are you getting the point so now whatever the distance the not the distance whatever the difference was there between the freezing point and the boiling point which is 100 degree celsius or 100 kelvin now that 
that difference also increases because boiling point elevated freezing point depreciated you know and ultimately the gap between the new freezing point and the boiling point is more so do remember this okay now what is the formula that you have to remember just like the same you know the diff, uh, elevation in boiling point delta tf is equals to kf into m molality it was same right delta tb is equals to kb into molality this is the change in boiling point this is the change in freezing point ebullioscopic constant cryoscopic constant molality molality we'll do a question on this okay we'll do a question on this and i'll tell you one more thing do you remember what was the formula i mean you know for molality just put it there and you'll get the answer okay now you'll remember one more thing over here when we were looking for the value of kb and the value of kf the formula is same what is it the you know the universal gas constant into the molar mass of the solvent into when we write for kb tb square it's tf square just change the subscripts 1000 into delta h whenever we boil we vaporize things right whenever we are talking about freezing it's fusion so do remember this right do remember this i mean because in the case of freezing point melting and freezing both happens and when we talk about fusion what's fusion is it freezing or uh, melting it's melting okay so melting and the freezing point is same right that's the reason fusion do remember this is this clear come on let me know yes or no and now over here we are going to get into the next question pay attention a solution of urea in water has a boiling point of 100.15 degree celsius okay calculate the freezing point of the same solution if kf and the kb value of water is given to you as 1.87 this one is going to be kf and kb value is given to you as 0.52 okay and they're talking about urea is the solute water is the solvent and this is the delta tb value am i correct or am i wrong it's wrong this is not the delta tb value why is that because you should remember at what particular temperature does water boils initially it was 100 now because of the solution it is 100.15 now in order to calculate the delta tb value it has to be 100.15 minus 100 comes out to be 0 0.15 this is going to be the delta tb value that we have to use this much is the increment okay and now pay attention i know you are paying attention yeah good over here we are actually going to find the molarity first because if we have to calculate uh the freezing point then ultimately we have to know the molality this is given to us this is not let's do this delta tb is equals to kb into molality you have to tell me the value of molarity over here guys kb 0 0.52 upon 0 0.15 let me know the answer for the molarity molality not molarity molality come on everybody molality 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 who's going to give me the correct answer 0 0.28 Kushi is giving me an answer over here Kushi, do you really think pay attention sir 0 0.15 upon 0 0.52 okay taking kb on the lhs yes 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 0 0.15 upon 0 0.52 
करेक्ट माय बैंड आंसर कम्स आउट टू बी जीरो पॉइंट टू एट ओके ठीक है तो आंसर कम्स आउट टू बी जीरो पॉइंट टू एट करेक्ट एंड नाउ वॉट्स गोइंग टू बी दिनो नाउ यू शूड रिमेंबर वी आर गोइंग टू यूज द सेम वैल्यू जीरो पॉइंट टू एट टू कैलकुलेट डेल्टा टी एफ एल टेल यू वन मोर थिंग सो एनी हाउ यू हैव टू यूज द के एफ वैल्यू विच एंड विद दी मोलैलिटी जीरो पॉइंट टू एट वट इज द के एफ वैल्यू गिवन टू यू बाय द क्वेश्चन वन पॉइंट एट सेवन यू नो ऑलवेज रिमेंबर वट एवर डेल्टा टी एफ वैल्यू यू गेट इफ यू पुट अ नेगेटिव साइन टू दिस you'll always get the correct freezing point why is that that is only possible in the case of water because let's say your delta tf value comes out to be 5 degree celsius then ultimately you should remember 0 degree celsius was the temperature where you know things were freezing we have to do the depression of freezing point 5 degree celsius at minus 5 degree celsius now the solution will freeze whatever delta tf value you get simply put the minus sign on to it and you will get the answer and question is not talking about the depression in freezing point it's not talking about the delta tf it's talking about the actual tf okay so over here do remember whenever you multiply give me an answer over here yes 0.54 that is delta tf then tf is going to be minus 0.54 degree celsius just the minus sign and that's what it is going to be do remember this theek hai but if this is only possible for water because the freezing point of water is very much easy zero right that's the reason okay now let's talk about osmosis what exactly happens in the case of osmosis guys pay attention i do have a membrane over here for the membrane i'll make it like this this zigzag one is the membrane semi permeable membrane what is this semi permeable membrane okay do remember this now i'll ask you something i am keeping up a lot of water over here and i am keeping up a lot of water over here where do you think the water will go i'll do one more thing i'll remove this is side a this is side b what will be the movement of water when i simply remove the membrane a to b or b to a i mean i'm talking about quantity obviously the molecules they are going to be in equilibrium there would be a lot of molecules going to a but yeah i'm talking about the quantity from where do you see actually Uh, you know the quantity of water shifting it's going to be b to a correct good and this act exactly happens when we talk about the waterfalls as well because whenever we talk about the waterfalls whenever we see a waterfall see if this is the cliff from where water is coming up see ultimately there's no water quantity available right so what exactly happens water is anyhow moving from where water is more available to where water is less available to the higher concentration to the lower concentration even that happens with wind with air as well correct now pay attention over here whenever we talk about osmosis we are actually looking at the movement of water molecules through semi permeable membrane okay and now again pay attention right now over here and over here in the case a and b the water which is available is pure but when we talk about let's say i am adding up a lot of non volatile solute over here a lot of solute over here now where do you think the water is more pure it's a oh, yes higher concentration to lower where water is pure here water is 100% pure where is the quant concentration of water higher concentration of water higher concentration of water is higher over here 
and over here as there is a lot of impurities this is impure water low concentration correct concentration of salt is more over here you know impurity is more over here but you know waters uh, quant you know concentration over here is less not the quantity quantity is more concentration and quantities you know we have to look for the volume as well okay so compared to this water this water is less pure now what's going to happen what do you think from where the water is going to go to where from a to b or to b to a through semi permeable membrane what is a semi permeable membrane semi permeable membrane is a membrane layer which selectively allows the molecules to pass through so water molecules are small they will pass if you're talking about let's say glucose present over here or any other bigger ma uh, molecule it will stop if it is a protein macromolecule it will not allow the pa passage of uh, you know the uh, protein or something but water can pass and now guys what's going to be the direction of flow of water it's going to be from higher concentration to the lower concentration that is what is going to be seen how many of you disagree if you have doubts ask me right now come on clear not clear do you have a doubt no doubt let me know clear okay now what's going to happen so whenever we're talking about the flow of water it's from a to b from impure to impure okay now pay attention what is osmotic pressure because osmotic pressure is a colligative property osmotic pressure is the pressure which you apply so i am actually making up a piston over here guys piston and i am simply going to put weights weight 1 weight 2 and so on but what's happening when i put weights i'm increasing the pressure because the area the cross sectional area remains same i'm increasing only the force pressure is equals to force per area but area over here is constant so if i increase the force the pressure increases so by putting up weights i am increasing up the you know pressure over there so i am going to put weights until i am going to put weights until this particular flow stops and when the flow stops i stop putting up weights so can you calculate how much weight did we put upon how much cross sectional area can you calculate pressure yes either you can do it with a hydraulic press or something or manually by putting up weights but we should know how much pressure did we apply in order to stop the flow in order to stop the flow and that pressure is denoted as pi which is the osmotic pressure which is directly proportional to the concentration of solute why because if we are going to put more concentration of if you are going to increase the concentration of solute then water will flow much faster then the tendency of water to flow from a to b will increase if we make it more impure the water will the tendency of water to flow towards the b will increase and then to in, to decrease this flow to stop this flow you have to put more and more pressure 
so why are you going to put more pressure because the concentration of impurities is more so the formula final formula comes out to be concentration of the solute into the gas constant into temperature and concentration molarity is nothing but number of moles upon volume so pi can be written as number of moles of the solvent solute upon volume of solution into r into t do remember this yes praveen ssp is coming right now over here and looking for important topics for j advance you can definitely put a message in telegram i'll definitely reply to you over there or i'll make a short video for you guys but i have already made a short video to let you know which all topics you should not miss but probably you would have missed the particular video see that video it was uploaded today itself in the morning in the afternoon and share it as well and now khushi saying sir i have a doubt okay so like i am not able to imagine it practically water flows from higher to the lower yes theek ach theek you not able to uh, imagine it practically let's do it something in a different way now let me ask you something whenever we are talking about grapes this is water and i have a grape or i have a kishmish okay i'm having a kishmish raisin this is a you know a kishmish is the pure water much more sweeter or kishmish kishmish is the much more sweeter thing right why would it be because kishmish is actually containing very 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 good amount of uh, carbohydrates it's inside do we have carbo carbohydrates outside no what will happen to the kishmish after 4 hours will it swell will it shrink more or will it stay the way it is let me know what will happen to the kishmish boys and girls it will swell why did it happen because the amount of water is also available in kishmish but it's less compared to what is outside outside the amount of water is in abundance there is no impurity the concentration of water outside is more the concentration of water inside is less so i'll tell you something this is volume v this contains 1 ml of water this is volume v again same volume this contains 3 ml of water here the size of the kishmish i'm talking about the volume of the kishmish it's v let's say if i dry up the kishmish or i squeeze the kishmish i get 1 ml of water if i extract the water and with in the same volume 3 ml of water is available outside where is the concentration of water higher outside right then why does the kishmish swell because water moves from higher to lower concentration now khushi is this clear this is what exactly happens cool now in order to in order to prevent any water go, getting inside what we can do because ultimately when water gets inside it swells what if i try to hold the kishmish and does not let it swell then ultimately water will not go but the amount of force or the amount of pressure that you have applied to stop this flow of water that pressure is the osmotic pressure because with that same pressure water was with the same pressure the water was trying to get inside but if you have stopped this you know swelling thing swelling process then you have actually applied the same pressure that is the stopping pressure i mean there is no term as stopping pressure you can just can remember that okay is this clear understood amazing so this is how it is okay so anyhow this at same time see did we change the temperature over here for the kishmish no can we change the universal gas constant no we are not talking about that so what did we really change c and pi so now i'll, I'll talk about something else if i'm having two kishmish same size this is kishmish 1 this was kishmish 2 here the concentration of carbohydrates 
is let's say x and the concentration of carbohydrates in the kishmish 2 this is 1 this is 2 is y and i'm giving you the relationship x is greater than y where do you think osmotic pressure is going to be more let's see come on let me know सर मेरा बहुत बैकलॉग है मैं नोट्स भी इनकम्प्लीट हैं कल से ऑफलाइन क्लासेस शुरू हो रही हैं क्या करूं यू जस्ट हैव इफ यू हैव एनी बैकलॉग इन एनी चैप्टर यू कैन एक्चुअली जस्ट फॉलो माय क्लासेस डेली एंड इफ यू वांट टू वॉच दीज रिकॉर्डिंग्स यू नो अवेलेबल देन यू कैन एक्चुअली फॉलो मी ऑन अन अकेडमी ऐप वेयर आई हैव गिवन अ लॉट ऑफ फ्री क्लासेज एंड आई हैव बीन गिविंग यू बैकलॉग यू नो ऑल द चैप्टर्स ओवर देयर let it be ncrt marking even if you want to solve your backlogs you know cover your backlogs i have made ncrt markings for you guys as well okay do remember that now boys and girls let me know what's going to happen over here where is going to be the osmotic pressure more in the case 1 or in the case 2 yes mohammed absolutely don't worry about it advance is not a tough particular uh, examination the criteria the pattern makes it tough they anyhow make you think analytically you know to a greater extent but if your basics are good you will that's the only reason i take so many examples and i do not end the class soon yes so ultimately wherever the concentration of carbohydrates is going to be more that kishmish is going to have i mean this the membrane over there the flow of water is going to be with a good amount of pressure and hence i have to put more osmotic pressure over there to stop that flow of water so do remember that okay now what's exactly happening over here we are looking at red blood cells we are looking at blood cells over here okay so in the case of isotonic solution the concentration inside and the concentration outside is same of what of water or even the salts now whenever we talk about the hypertonic solution these cells this is not swelling this is shrinking this is shrinking water is gone water is away you know went outside the cells when this can happen when concentration outside of the salts is more than the concentration inside then the water moves out water moves out in order to make the concentration of water inside and outside same when we talk about the hypotonic solution the concentration inside is more than the concentration outside we're talking about the concentrations of the solutes okay the salts or maybe protein carbohydrate whatever okay do remember these things so this is where things are swelling up water is only getting inside the cells becomes bloated over here there is a you know equilibrium maintained with the flow of water and over here the water came out shrinking in the case of hypertonic in the case of hypo tonic hypopotamus kind hypo i used to remember it like this hypo means hippo kind of thing hippo is golu golu it will swell isoton isotonic iso means same so iso is going to have same concentration inside and outside so do remember this okay yes these are the things that i have actually told you about okay and yes pi the osmotic pressure is equals to the concentration r and the t do remember this okay and over here we are going to talk about the reverse osmosis so guys i'll talk, tell you something whenever we talk about reverse osmosis as a process ro ro purifiers water purifiers is what we are talking about what type of water do you get do you get a pure water and you make it impure or do you get an impure water and you make it pure let me know hai na it's nice right hypo hippo good so now let me know boys and girls i'm going to make that container again so i'm pretty much sure everybody would write we actually look for impure water to become pure correct now and always remember impure water is much more in abundance the tap water that we are that is coming to us is impure it's more in quantity the one which we want to store 
in pure quantities uh, in uh, which is which has to be pure it is going to be slightly lesser so let's do it like this this side tap water and this side let's say no water right now your your house has no water my house has no water okay now pay attention these are the impurities available in water which is there in the tap water now what exactly happens now if you even have slightest amount of water available over here what will happen the water from the a and b so water from a will start going to b what should i do because i want this water i'll apply the osmotic pressure i'll have a piston i'll apply pressure through piston this is piston i'll apply pressure so that first and the foremost thing this stops chalo amazing we stopped it nothing is happening right now okay we made the things you know in such a scenario that uh, ultimately there is no flow of water from a to b but ultimately we now want this water to be less and this water to be more what should i do so that water moves from here to here but salts cannot move salts will not be able to move because ultimately the membrane will not allow the membrane will not allow it is a semi permeable membrane but now what will i do what should i do in order to make this water go here should i force it should i force it then only it will happen and how to do that i'll apply pressure more and more pressure so that the more pressure i apply the more water goes here the more pressure i apply the more water goes here it's not going out you know through the walls of the container it's actually happening through the membrane it can even happen from here it can even happen from here it can even happen from here so everything will starts the water will start coming to the a part now whenever we apply pressure pressure applied greater than the osmotic pressure in this scenario when we see water flowing in a reverse direction water flowing in the reverse direction this is known as this process is known as reverse osmosis clear yes or no see i'm trying to see anyhow you will be able to go through definitions if you go through definition it's the same thing i'm just trying to make things easier for you okay now look at this the direction of osmosis can be reversed if a pressure larger than the osmotic pressure we applied extra pressure no is applied to the solution this is solution this is solvent this phenomena is called reverse osmosis clear right amazing so now over here this is how we see you have salt water the tap water you want fresh water what you do is you apply pressure greater than the osmotic pressure over here then this if this is the semi permeable membrane spm the water from the solution starts coming out from the membrane towards the fresh water side and this fresh water can be collected either either here in the tank or can be used so that's what we're talking about okay and this is where we are absolutely at the end of this class so but before we end this class i'll tell you some formulas that you really have to remember there are only four formulas that you really have to remember write this delta p upon p not a is equals to mole fraction of b relative lowering of vapor pressure which is this is equals to the mole fraction of the solute now pay attention delta tb is equals to kb into molality this is ebullioscopic constant the, uh, this is the uh, elevation in boiling point now depression in freezing point is equals to cryoscopic constant into molality and the fourth one osmotic pressure is equals to concentration of solute into r into t do remember this okay 
so i'll write it again something like this n2 which is 2 is for sol uh, solute do remember these these are the three formulas that you really have to remember okay and yes if you really want to ask a doubt you can ask us anytime anywhere whenever you want but yeah this feature is absolutely free so do not worry about this guys you just ha do have to download the app and ultimately uh, you will be able to you know access this feature so ask any doubts unlimited doubts you will get an uh, you know a solution video solution in hindi and english both you have to just click on doubts and solutions take a picture or take it you know take it from the gallery crop it and then ultimately you should remember you should ultimately use one doubt at a time clear images and you know the options also should be there do not put handwritten material do not put multiple questions at once because we should know what you know what's your priority okay yes okay abirami i'll look into it uh, i'll ask the team why is this happening and i'll let you know in the next class okay and yes this is where you will be able to ask doubts and you can actually get it solved even at night even in the morning whenever you want thank you so much this is my time uh, we are absolutely at the end of this class subscribe share like this particular uh, channel and class so i mean share the session like the session and subscribe to the channel and this is me love mehan where you can use my code to get enrolled into subscribe classes if you want to start your preparation for long term year batches okay amazing let's meet again tomorrow we will be doing up chemical bonding we starting up chemical bonding and we will be covering up chemical bonding in max four classes or three let's see theek hai chalo all the best take care stay safe bye bye thank you tata